Okay, so for this next challenge, this is challenge three on Project Isla. This is it right here. So the problem here is to find prime factors of this large number, and then the the answer you're going to give is the largest prime factor. So quite a simple one um, to explain. But we're going to code this. This is a little bit harder than what we've been doing so far. So let's get started. Um, if you're coding along, obviously try this out yourself first before you watch this video um, and then once you've done it maybe just come watch the video see how I did it see if there's anything you learn from my method, you might have done it in different ways, M many different ways to do this the way I'm going to do is not the best way but it's the way that I first did it um, the first way I thought of doing it and the way I think is most intuitive and easy to understand as well as able to be done this way um, there is a slightly more intuitive way, but it just takes too long for the computer to run the simulation. I'll go into that in a bit, but here's the question. So I'm just going to copy this number, um, so I'm going to type it out, and then we're going to go over here and start coding. So we're going to define main like we always do. We're going to say our target is that number. Now what we're going to say is, um, so for prime factors, um, what we what we could do here is we could find all the factors of the number and then find prime factors afterwards but there's really no need for that um, we, we could just go straight into finding prime factors to find all the factors what we could say is like for i in range um, and we'd say 2 up to target um, I won't go into too much detail of y but we would say like for i in this range if i mod uh, sorry if target mod i is equal to zero and then we'd say like list of factors dot append and then we'd append i because we know it's a factor and at the end we could print our list um, so like you could see how this would work we'd get all the list of factors but this number is actually massive it might not look massive but this would take a long time to iterate through all of these numbers and find which ones are right which ones are factors um, and w in the end we'd get a list and that list wouldn't have many numbers in and it would be quite quite pointless one thing I will go over from this from this method is the um, this range function having a second parameter so so far we've only ever used one parameter now what this second parameter does um, once I get rid of this is if I print i down here and I'm also going to make a new target because I don't want to be doing it on that huge number also going to call main down here don't forget to do that now if I print i you'll see we actually start at 2 here there's, there's no 1 we've skipped 1 reason being that we've we've told it to start at 2 that's what this first parameter does so when we don't put a parameter in there you see we uh, we start at 0 of the 0 indexing so these first two numbers were actually skipped on the previous one so pass in a number here if you want it to start at a certain value. Now another thing you can pass in, you can pass in a, a step size. So if we we pass in a step size of two. This is going to print every other number. So two, four, six, eight. We skip the first two because we told it to start at um, at two. So from two, it looped up from two to target in steps of two. So it went two, then at four, then six and so on so quite handy in all certain situations if you want to uh, um, find certain things so for example this bit of code right here and um, we could use this in the um, which one was that I think it was the first one where we check multiples of 3 and 5 which is could have said like 4i in range of the number and um, in steps of 3 and then we could have came back and done it in steps of 5 and stuff it, it may have been faster computationally to do that, but it, it would have been more cold to do it like that. That's why I didn't, and it was a little, a little bit more complicated to do it like that. So I just thought I'd show that, see what, why you can use it like that, and uh, it might be helpful in some cases. So anyway, how we're going to do this problem, we're not going to find all the factors. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to check. Um, so we're going to say potential factor is equal to, we're going to start at 2 because hopefully you're all aware the first prime number is 2 and uh, 1 is not a prime number despite what people may tell you 1 is definitely not prime now we're going to say list of 
primes equal to an empty list. We currently don't know any prime numbers. I should probably call this prime factors. So we don't know any prime factors of this number yet. This is what we're going to find. Now what we're going to say is we're going to say... Um, so I'm going to go down a little bit. I'm going to say if target mod potential factor is equal to zero. So if it's divisible by our potential factor, we're going to say, therefore we know it's a prime factor. So list of prime factors dot append target. Now, if it's not a prime factor, what we're going to do is um, we're going to say elif sorry we're not going to say elif, we're going to say else so you've got if statements, you've got else if which are elif statements and you've got else statements now just quickly what these do is what an if statement will do is it'll say if this argument is true jump inside it and check now an elif has to follow an if and what it says is if you've hit this if statement just skip this, there's no need to skip this one, don't even bother checking this one so you'd have like some condition here um, so if you've hit this statement and this was true you would actually just skip this, you wouldn't even check if this one was true now the reason you do this is um, well I, I won't go into the reasons you would do this but there are reasons you'd do this in code, this is a really important um, piece of logic now another version is else, what else will do is it'll say if you didn't hit this definitely all the time jump inside this um, and you can run these in chains so you can have like an if you can have an elif and then you can elifs sorry and um, what these do specifically as well rather than just jumping inside these definitely with because they have a condition that condition has to be met so it says if you've done this one and this return false check this one and if this one returns true jump inside if not then skip so have a Google, see what um, see what else you can find out about these these statements. If, elif, and else statements, they're really important. So make sure you know how to use them. Um, for this, we're going to use an if and an else. So we're going to say else target plus equals one. So there are a couple of optimizations around this, but I'm not going to go into them yet. We'll get to that at the end. So what this is going to do is it's going to say if target um, is divisible by potential factor we know that potential factor is therefore a prime factor um, we're going to append it to the list um, and if it's not we're going to add one to the target because we now need to uh, sorry not the target this is wrong uh, to potential factor so we're going to check the next number and say is that a, a factor of it now we're going to have to loop over this until our target value uh, sorry in here as well we need to say target is equal to target divided by potential factor so what this is going to do is if it is a potential factor uh, if it is a factor sorry then we're going to divide by it because say if our number was 10 okay so I'm just going to type this out say if our target equals 10 potential factor is equal to 2 now we know that target mod potential factor in this case so 10 mod 2 is 0 therefore we would jump inside this loop we would say 2 is a, a prime factor of our target so we're going to append it to our list then we'd have to divide by 2 so we'd say 10 divided by 2 is now our new target so this is 5 so our new target now would be 5 hopefully you understand why I'm doing this what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reduce this number down each time I find a prime factor and eventually the idea is I'll reduce this number so far it'll get to 1 and then once it gets to 1 I'll know I've found all the prime factors and I don't need to keep looking this is going to be our, our exit condition um, in this case obviously you'd find 2, you divide 10 by 2 and that would reduce it to 5 you'd then check 2 again 2 wouldn't go into it, you'd check 3, 3 wouldn't go into it, you'd check 4, 4 wouldn't go into it 
Now you check 5, 5 would go into it, and 5 is also prime, so we get our 2 prime factors of 2 and, t two and 5. The reason you do this, and um, the reason I'm doing it this way is because then we only find prime factors, we don't find non-prime. Um, so for example, what number can I give here? So for example, if we had 12, 12 a good number to check? No, if if we had eighteen, so if we if we have eighteen, um, now we check two, and we say it is, so we're going to divide by two, we're going to get nine, and then we're going to check two again, two isn't, so we're not going to divide, we're going to check three, three is, so we divide it by three, and we get three. Now we check three again, we divide by it, we get one, and now we're finished. So in this step, we had a two. In this step, we had a three. In this step we had a 3, so our answer would be 2, 3, 3. They would be the prime factors of 18. If we hadn't been dividing by them, we'd have also found that 6 was a prime factor of 18. And 6 isn't prime. It is a factor, but it's not prime. So that would have been wrong. Um, not too sure how to explain this, because this is less of a coding problem and more of a mathematical side problem. But hopefully you understand this. Um, You'll see when I print this out anyway, hopefully, that it does work, and hopefully you can understand why. So, target is equal to target divided by potential factor. Now, once we've done all this, we need to loop over this many times, and like I said, we need our condition to be when target is equal to 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to say while, I'm going to say target is greater than 1. We're going to call this... And at the end, we're going to print a list of prime factors. And if I run this, you see we get these prime factors printed out. Now, these are actually wrong because um, I'm appending the wrong thing here. I'm appending target. I'm not appending the, uh, the potential factor. I meant to append potential factor. So if we append potential factor, these are our factors. This up here was actually the number before we had divided by our potential factor. So this number divided by 71 will be this number. Then this number divided by 839 will be this number. And then this number divided by 1471 will be this number. And then this number divided by this number is obviously 1. And therefore we hit our while condition. Um, we hit our like we we made this false basically. Um broke out of this, printed our list, and we can see our answer right here. So it's actually printed them in ascending order. It will always print them in ascending order because of the way this logic works. So yeah, hopefully you understand why this is doing this. Um sorry if I haven't explained that particularly well. But yeah. This this has to be done this way. Um or maybe not it has to be done this way, but you can't do it the way of finding all the factors of this number because this number is just too big. You'll be there all day trying to find these factors. Um, you could use these prime factors to generate its factors, and that would be a hell of a lot quicker computationally. So you could definitely do that if that was what you were wanting to do. Maybe you have a particular problem that needs that. But just for this problem, um, doing it this way is absolutely fine. Now, a couple of optimizations you can make that I'll quickly talk about is this potential factor here. This is obviously always going to have to be a prime number. Now, 2 is prime, and then when we add 1 to it, 3 is prime. But when we add 1 to that again, we're going to get 4. 4 is not prime because 4 is even, and we know every even number other than 2 is not prime. So you could make this a 2 instead, and all you would have to do to do that is you'd have to have an else if down here, so you'd have to have elif, and then you'd say um, potential factor is equal to 2. Oops. Now, if it's equal to 2, we just want to add 1. Else potential factor plus equals 2. So, what this would do is, whoops, that's in the wrong. So you'd say, if this, then great, that's original, that's how, it's, how we've kept it like last time. If this is not true, we want to iterate our potential factor. 
Now, how much do we want to iterate it by depends on how big it already is. If it's equal to 2, we obviously want to check 3, so we just need to add 1 to it. If it's not equal to 2, um, we need to hit this else statement and we need to say add 2 to it. Because now what we're going to do here is we're going to say go from 2 to 3, then go from 3 to 5, we'll skip 4. We'll go from 5 to 7 to 9, so we're just going to check all the odd numbers now. This will take down like half of the potential factors. Um, I'm not too sure how much of an impact this is going to have on performance. We'll, we'll check that now if you like. We'll import time. At the start of here we'll say start time is equal to time dot time. At the end we'll print um, this took and then we'll say seconds dot format. Don't worry if you don't know what any of this means. Um, it's not too important. I might go over this in a later video, but I'm not going to be doing this now. So we'll do time dot time minus start time. So you can see here it takes. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this number a little bit bigger. So if I add another two digits on the end of this, how long will this take? So this took 2.64 seconds. Let's run it again to make sure that's consistent. 2.61, so about 2.6 seconds. Now, if I get rid of um, what logic was it? So if I make this a one. And then I get rid of these two lines. This is the answer we had a minute ago. Now, this should probably take about five seconds, I would imagine. There we go, about 4.6 seconds. So you can see we've just halved the computation time, which is massive. Um, halving the time obviously means you can do numbers twice as big, in theory. Um, there's also a lot of other things you can do to this. So, what you could do is you could say, um, Instead of generating this potential factor just by adding a number to it, you could keep a list of all the potential factors you've already done and then generate your new potential factor from like the next number that isn't visible by them. So you'd basically be generating only prime numbers. Um, definitely something you could do. I'm not sure how computationally intensive that would be and whether or not it'd be better to do it that way than this way, but just something you could think about, you can maybe try doing some of that yourself. Um, have a play about with this, something similar to this, see if you can improve the performance, see if you can get this 2.6 seconds down for this number right here, see if you could get this number down to under a second maybe, um, I definitely think it would be possible, there's just got to be some clever little tricks you could do, so there's stuff such as maybe you don't check all the numbers. Um, Actually, that maybe wouldn't work. I'm not too sure, but there's definitely things you could do to improve this. This isn't the best. Um, I've I've coded myself a few things better than this. It didn't use slightly. Uh, didn't use the same logic, but you can do the same thing in different ways. Uh, definitely faster. Have a think about it, see if you can come up with your own answers for this. Uh, one last thing I will quickly show is that the uh, the answer was actually right. Six thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven. Uh, I didn't actually point this out earlier when we found that answer. But it is right, that is the answer. So hopefully you like this video. It's a bit longer than the others. I've explained a little bit more stuff in this and I got a little bit lost with trying to explain this logic down here, but hopefully you followed along. If not, leave a comment below, let me know. I'll try and explain it a little bit better. Um but yeah that that's it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more of these, and I will see you in the next video.